What's up everyone, it's Del Lead, and today in How to Build Rockets, we're gonna be talking about designing custom suspension for your rovers and your land vehicles. Now, in the new career mode for Juno New Origins, there are a lot of early on uh, missions that you can take on that involve driving to various checkpoints. And the starting area for the new career mode is the Juno Village. And this is a very mountainous area. There's a lot of rough terrain and you have to drive up these hills and cliffs in order to reach the checkpoints. Uh, this is a very difficult task unless you have proper suspension for your vehicles. Now, as an example, I have here a very simple little car. It has four wheels, uh, off-road tires and no suspension. And I'm just gonna drive it up this hill. And you can watch as it hits every corner and bounce and bump uh, the vehicle will rock and roll it will bounce up and down the wheels will lose contact from the ground pretty frequently and that's because there's no suspension so all four wheels are rigidly locked in place and there's nothing pushing them into the ground to keep them there and there's nothing to absorb that impact as they hit those bumps so what we need to make this vehicle work better is a form of suspension that will help keep our wheels in contact with the ground regardless of the terrain or what we're crossing over so the simplest way that we can add suspension to our craft is to use shock parts. Now the shock is basically a large spring. Uh, like any car suspension system, it absorbs impacts by compressing the spring and then when uh, force is reduced, like the wheels being lifted away from the ground, the spring will expand and push the wheel down. So this is a very basic form of suspension. We only have one shock assigned to each of the wheels. Uh, we're using symmetry here to make these a little bit easier, but as we go on to more advanced forms of suspension, uh, we actually won't be able to use part symmetry and we will have to uh, break symmetry to make uh, our suspension systems work together. So for this one we can because there's only one point of contact, which is the shock here uh, to the chassis, but when we have suspension systems that have two points of contact, uh, we'll have to break symmetry because you cannot use symmetry with two points of contact on a single chassis or fuel tank. So let's test out this uh, very simple independent suspension system and see how it performs on our rugged mountain terrain. Okay, we are now climbing up the hill and right away we can see a difference. You can watch as the wheels uh, fight to maintain contact with the ground. Now it still will uh, lose contact sometimes when I'm coming over a lip uh, where I'll catch a little bit of air and that's not enough uh, time for the suspension to react and push the wheels down, but you can see that it is having a noticeable impact. The other thing you'll notice is that I'm actually getting better traction up this hill. Earlier, I was not able to drive this vehicle directly up the hill, but now that I have something that's giving me more traction and more control on the ground by being able to push each of those tires independently into the ground, uh, I'm getting better grip, better traction, and because I'm getting better traction, my wheels are actually delivering torque to the ground and I can drive pretty much straight up this mountain now with no issue. We can zoom in here and watch a little bit more closely as the shocks actually, actually work here. You can see each of them compress and expand as we go over each of these bumps. And as you watch from the side, you can watch the wheels move up and down uh, relative to the chassis as we hit the bumps and walls on the mountain here. The second version of suspension that I want to talk about in this video has two sets of shocks. Now there's the first set of shocks uh, similar to the last one that goes directly down, but we also have a second set of shocks on this arm here. And these shocks are at an angle, but they also have hinges here and here. So the hinges are actually important because if we don't have hinges and this shock was just directly attached to the wheel base here, when this wheel goes up or down, we're actually changing the distance uh, the length of this arm here and if we can't change the length of this arm when the wheel goes up and down uh, It basically locks this arm in place Likewise if this arm is locked in place then this arm can't move because there's no hinge that allows this arm to rotate So we have a hinge here at the base and a hinge here at the wheel itself that allows this whole arm to rotate up and down with the shocks as we come over terrain now this system is a little bit trickier to design, but it does give you a little bit more strength because you're using two sets of shocks. Uh, you get a little bit more lateral suspension. So if an impact is coming from the side, this shock can absorb it. And then most of the weight is absorbed by this set of shocks. Uh, so you can add more load to your vehicle. We can make this heavier and these shocks would be able to handle it a lot better. It also looks pretty cool having this system here. 
Now, something worth noting with putting these together is you can't use symmetry. So these parts I can grab and drag away. There's no symmetry enabled on this part. And the reason being is because I have a part here that is connected to the fuel tank surface. So this shock is connected to this fuel tank. It's also connected to this fuel tank, which is connected to this hinge, which is connected to this shock, which is connected to this fuel tank, which is connected to this hinge, which is connected to this fuel tank, which is connected to this fuel tank, which is connected back to the main chassis. So we have two paths where these things connect. And because of that, you actually can't use mirror symmetry. Uh, if I try to use mirror symmetry here, going from disabled to mirror, uh, the selected part is connected to the craft with more than one attach point. Make sure it's only connected by just one for symmetry to be applied. Now, the way we get around this is I'm gonna go to the part connections tool. I'm gonna select this shock here and I'm going to get rid of the connection here. So this part is no longer connected to the surface. Now, the only thing that's connected is this part and I can come over here and hit mirrored and now you'll see my symmetry tool works. Now from here, I can hit break symmetry I can go back to my shock here and I can use the part connections tool to reconnect it to the craft. And then it has uh, no symmetry. It is symmetrical, but there's no symmetry. What you have to remember is you have to do this now for each shock individually. So you have to reconnect them both. Um, so it adds a little bit more hassle when you're putting these together, but it does give you a better suspension system. Now, the last form of suspension I want to show you in this video is a double swing arm style suspension. So. Zooming in here, we can see we still have this one main spring that carries most of the loading, but we've also attached these two support arms. These double swing arms will help keep the wheel centered laterally, as well as support the wheel through the range of motion here. And I'll be honest, they also just look really cool. Now, the same rule applies for these. It will require you to break symmetry to build the suspension system, but it will perform a lot better than just a basic a single shock suspension system and it gives you the added bonus of cool looks and a little bit better traction control especially going into turns where you'll have a rolling effect these bars will help counter that as you can see here this suspension system is very durable uh, you'll watch the arms rotate up and down as it uh, hits all of these bumps the swing arms are keeping the wheels lined up nicely and the suspension is absorbing all of that impact. This suspension system has the added bonus of uh, helping me maintain traction control during sharp turns. Uh, as you can see, when I do a sharp turn, the car is going to naturally want to roll outwards. Uh, and you can see this outward shock here is compressing to absorb that load. And these roller arms are helping keep the wheels lined up uh, to give me all four wheels on the ground for control during sharper turns. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you would like to see all of these different suspension designs and a few others I didn't mention, there's a link in the description of this video where you can download all the different suspensions that I've used here and add them to your own crafts, or you could try doing some research and building your own system to add on to your own craft. If you found this video helpful, please like it and leave a comment below what you would like me to do next. And as always, thank you for watching.